Hello, my name is Beth Lopes. I'm the adapter and director of Romeo and Juliet Hard Way Home. Yeah, this version of Romeo and Juliet is very much inspired by the album that we're using in the show. Uh, Bear Creek is the name of the album by Brandy Carlisle. It came out in 2012. And so the music has really inspired these feelings for me of it's, it's a dusty, hot, kind of oppressive locale. And there's this train whistle that starts Hard Way Home. At least that's what it always is in my brain. Um, and I, I imagined this train that kind of just goes right past this town. For this production of Romeo and Juliet, we've created a very unique sort of environment for these characters to live in. So with color and the two families, um, we use color to differentiate them a lot in the play. So for the Capulets, we have a little bit warmer of a feel, a little bit more fiery, dusty. We go into a lot of oranges, reds, browns, sepia tones. And the Montagues, we skew a little bit more towards greenery, and we see some olives in there, a couple shades of blue, things that are more reminiscent of trees and foliage. I also do recall having a discussion where the beginning of this transform, or like, you know, there's a transformation in, in the characters, and they start out really young, especially with the costumes and makeup. Um, and then as the show progresses, you could start to see them grow into themselves and who they want to be. There was something about the track Hard Way Home in particular that really fused in my mind with Romeo and Juliet. I can't remember the moment it happened, but I think it's surrounding the lyric, I sometimes lose my faith in luck. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And I just kept thinking about the characters of Romeo and Juliet and that they never get the chance. You know, and they're, they're in this moment where they don't know what they want to be, but they never get the chance to even try, even to find out. And that's where it started. And then the more I listened to the album, the more other pieces of music started to tie to other spots of the play. And it just kind of snowballed to the point where I couldn't stop thinking about it. The immensity of what we're trying to do with this project has been really rewarding and also really challenging because we have all of the normal challenges that exist in Romeo and Juliet. You have people playing these iconic characters with a lot of text that people know by heart. Um, and the, you know, the text is Shakespeare. It's heightened, it's rich, it's poetic. And we have all these fight sequences and there's all these things that are normally quite hard about doing Romeo and Juliet and then you add in all of this music and choreography and it's it's a huge challenge and we've really we've really asked a lot of the team you know actors designers everybody um, and it's been really exciting to see people step up the plate to the plate and be really game to just go for it but we've been working really hard I mean it's We've been using every single minute of rehearsal. <laughs> I think the thing that's really special about our production that is exemplified by having the music there is, is the voice of these young people. And particularly adding Mercutio and Tybalt to that core group. It's not just Romeo and Juliet in our production, it's the four of them. Because all four of them are the casualties of this feud, and they're all young people. They all have hopes and dreams. And with the music, we've been able to give them a voice in the sense that we've been able to give them a singing voice, and that being a way to really shine a light on the fact that these young people don't feel like they can talk to anyone or talk to their families. I mean, clearly we have the nurse and the friar, but they can't talk to their parents and they don't feel like anything that they say will make the world different. And so that's something that I really wanted to hit home with this production is I love that audience leaving feeling like, oh, not just, oh, what a tragedy. Oh, you know, we need to make, you know, inspire love and not hate, but that how do we create a world in which our young people feel like they have a voice and that people are listening and that they can speak freely and love freely and be freely. And how do we create that world? Because I hope things are getting better, um, but I think that we still dismiss young opinions so frequently because we think we know better because we have the years under our belt. 
And I think that they might know something because they don't. Because they can see the world in a fresher way, with fresher eyes.